Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight where we look at what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now over the last few months I've made a number of videos about Russian agriculture and the fertiliser sector. However today I want to talk about the EU and how it's taken the opposite path to Russia as far as agriculture is concerned with potentially devastating consequences for the people and farmers of Europe. Now, the recent headlines in the European press, mainly the French press, have included references to harvesting, sowing, spring and winter crops. Now, these phrases are not, however, the result of a new episode of the once very famous British Radio 4 programme about farming called The Archers. What has prompted the use of such references to farming and agriculture in the region, which, according to Joseph Burrell, the former head of European Foreign Affairs, is the Garden of Eden? Now, the issue now is about the failure of the wheat crop, particularly the more resilient varieties. Now, estimates are, suggest that this could be the worst European harvest in decades. I mean, for French pasta producers particularly, who work exclusively with r local raw materials, this is a significant setback given the importance of wheat in their production. Now, due to limited availability of raw materials, prices are going up for industrial consumers. In the context of rising inflations, buyers will obviously <coughs> have to opt for the cheaper options. And the cheaper options is importing. Statistical data has shown that the concept of French food autonomy is now flawed. In fact, over 50% of pasta products and 63% of cereals, which are made from wheat grain, are now imported into France. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund my channel and the website seobricksinsight.com to further develop it. You can do this by making a small donation, which can be done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Now, everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me. And I'm thanking you all now just for watching because they're really all important to me. Now, it's irrelevant whether, whether the import actually comes from another EU country or from a third party. It's crucial to note that the leading agricultural country within the box, based on the level of Brussels subsidies to farmers, is France, has seen a serious decline in its food security. France is therefore relying on imports from countries around the world. Even Vietnam is exporting food into France, which highlights the severity of the crisis and the re reluctance of the government and the media to discuss it. I mean, despite its reputation as a bastion of its food security, the EU has been engaged in a series of actions that has seriously undermined this stability. Now, it's the environmental lobby which has long sought the funding of the so-called green transition that's making all of these results, and it's seen the results of its efforts. Their campaign to demonise livestock farming and promote various vegan and other idiotic diets has been successful in reducing the number of cattle and other livestock, leading to a corresponding reduction in the number of European dairy farms. Now this raises the question of whether Europeans are going to be forced to turn to alternative sources such as bugs, which were suggested by Klaus Schwab of the World Economic Forum. You will eat bugs and be proud of it. The new NATO head, Mark Rutte, when he was the Dutch Prime Minister, declared war on his country's farmers, claiming that farmer, a farming was danger to the planet and the government wanted to shut down thousands of farms. Now, that's an, the Netherlands is an agricultural powerhouse, major food exporter. Now, the government claimed it would need to implement significant measures to reduce various emissions, including ammonia, which is a contribute to pollution of the land, the seas and the skies. Now the majority of these uh, deposits on the Dutch land are from agricultural sources, he says concisely. The government's committee reports they wanted to implement measures that involved the acquisition and closing down of livestock farms. Now this was not a sudden development. I mean the 27 members of the EU collectively maintain a number of specifically protected nature reserves collectively known as Natura 2000 Network. In the summer of 2019, the Dutch Council of State, the highest is a miniature court, ruled that the Netherlands permit system for uh, allowing emissions was harming these reserves within its border. So it said they should need to do an immediate stop to farmers polluting their own land. 
So the EU war on agriculture continues, and it's not just in France and the Netherlands, but all over Europe that farmers are suffering. They're suffering rising energy costs and the rocketing price of animal feed and fertilisers. But the EU is more the focused on its net zero and green agenda than caring about their plight. In Europe now, there's a shortage of fresh, EU-grown, prepared, packaged and processed foods. And of course, this was the plan of the globalists who are now in power. The reduction of local production of a wide range of products, everything from socks to medicines, has been driven by the global of happy planetary consumption. Plus, imports are sourced from local locations where the costs are much lower. It's not all but the environmentally friendly concept was consistently identified as a key selling point to the public. As in, we don't mind people polluting other places, but just we need to get rid of the pollution here. And of course, will you still be eating French steaks with locally sourced uh, Belgian fries? I doubt it, as they're being forced out of business. Now, it seems if you don't comply with the green agenda, Greta Thunberg and the bureaucrats and their chums in the media will pursue you, vilify you, and then you'll be ostracised and the farmers will be presented as obstacles to a green future in Europe. And I don't think this is going to be the end of the problem. European farmers are likely to face significant social and economic challenges as a result of all of this. I mean, the globalist oligarchy, their desire to expand their influence and control. I mean, the now proposed free trade agreement with South America has just been resurrected. The Euro-Atlantic oligarchy requires new markets for its goods, but neither the European farmers nor their consumers want their bankruptcies or their imported food for the latter. The concerns are well-founded, particularly for farmers, and they can even be quantified. You only need to recall the widespread process by these workers, which led to significant disruptions in plenty of the cities. I mean, the streets of Brussels will remain stains with manure for a considerable period of time if they continue these anti-farming measures that are being implemented. I mean, farmers have had to resort to these extreme measures because they're being forced into extinction. I mean, however, the interests of the autocrats are not affected by the opinions of the general public or the farmers. Their position on this matter is in entirely indifference. Once a decision has been made to accept the treaty, it will be implemented at the earliest opportunity, accompanied by promises that will probably be, as usual, unfulfillable. Now, what are the concerns of the general European public about the availability of food in stores and lack of food security? How can these concerns be addressed by the Brussels men in grey? Well, they're not. I mean, basically what they are doing is if we don't have it, we'll buy it in. And that's a mantra that po was popular amongst macroeconomics uh, in the 1990s. The concepts also gained popularity within the EU. There's no interest in predicting how food will be produced and what prices will be in the Garden of Eden in five years' time. Their whole agenda is about net zero. It's irrelevant whether people are hungry or not. In fact, they're going to be cold in the winter. It's important to remember that these people are unelected. In the, the European Union is a totally unelected there. And let's not talk about the difficulties of the euro. The, the EU's 10-year strategy has destroyed its own agriculture and it's restricted the production of food and it's now getting the results. However, this actually has benefited Russia. Although they've imposed various sanctions on Russia since 2040, Russia has now successfully implemented advanced agricultural technologies, increased fertilizer production, and increased yields of everything from cereals to pigs to poultry. Now, these achievements have put Russia as a leading export of grains, pig and poultry meat. Russia has not only ensured its own food security, but it's created a long-term growth opportunities in agricultural production. So, should the pan-Europeans have serious problems in food insecurity in the future, Russia will be able to provide them with support. Now, I'm not referring to the authorities, but the actual people in the form of humanitarian aid. We can send them our wine from the Krasnodar region, chicken legs, vegetable preserves, and excellent Russian flour and bread. 
We are proud of our generosity here in Russia, and it's increasingly evident that Russia's not just assuming a role of guarantee of food security for itself, but a majority of developing countries all over Africa and the, the global south. So, could also do it for the European Union. Thank you for watching. Please like and share, uh, subscribe. Please share. If you want to help me out, press the thanks button and do make a small donation. Don't forget to uh, comment. See you all again soon. Thank you.